everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Britt. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you probably should because I normally talk about geeky things. But sometimes I sit on my couch with a glass of wine and I tell you guys the stories about the reasons why I drink. And uh, <laughs> this one's kind of a doozy. This one I'm actually completely over. I just think that this one's kind of a fun story to tell because it's about my first serious relationship. And it is about my uh, first heartbreak, my first real heartbreak. Um, I actually told the story about my real for like my first heartbreak from when I was in high school. Um, but this one was my first like real heartbreak where I was planning a future with somebody and he decided to vacate my life. So let's just let's just chat. So this gentleman and I met in an acting class. Um, he was incredibly attractive and he loved acting and if he could he wanted to act um, that or work in the NFL he was a football player um, I'm not gonna say for what school but not that it really matters so obviously he's not there anymore but he was a linebacker and he was very built a very built dude he was also just like I said very attractive to me at the time He's not the kind of guy that I go after now. I tend to like guys that are still fit, but I don't like guys that are like built fit. Anyway, um, but he was, at the time, what I really liked about guys. And I remember him walking into that acting class and I was just like, oh, if only I was in his league. Turns out I was, so good of me. He was not meant for me, clearly, because we're not together. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he was actually like a year ahead of me, I think. And he was uh, like going to graduate soon-ish from college. And he was hoping to get like something from the NFL, like he was hoping to get drafted. But very few people from that particular school necessarily get drafted. So it was really low chances that he was going to get drafted, but he really wanted to, and that's, that would have been like his biggest dream, to work in the NFL, and if he couldn't do that, he wanted to act, but he was actually such a nice guy, so I got to know him, and like, he was like your stereotypical, like, jock looking dude, and so I thought, he's probably a jerk. Turns out he's not. He's incredibly sweet, incredibly nice, he was wonderful. And he, I don't know, was just a nice guy. And so I fell for him and I fell hard. And then we were just friends for a very long time. I had this crush on him. I wasn't sure like where it would possibly go, but I've always been the kind of person who has trouble like reaching out when I have a crush on somebody, reaching out and being like, hey, I like you. Can we please date? Yeah, I have trouble with that. That's just something I have trouble with. Anyway. So eventually, we were just going out for dinners, going out for lunches, what have you, hanging out. And last, the next thing I kind of understood is that we were essentially boyfriend and girlfriend. We never made anything like official between the two of us. We were just dating. We were just hanging out, going out to dinner, that kind of thing. And we never, he never like asked me. That's one thing that I never understood about relationships because again I had never been in a relationship before this I didn't date in high school and I went on like a couple of dates here and there um, before this but never was I in a relationship with somebody else so I never understood like this big grand gesture of do you want to be my girlfriend and I'm sure that that does happen but that's not what happened with us with us it was just we were oops in a relationship like legitimately that's essentially what it was like like oops I guess we're dating and we never talked about exclusivity, which I've been told is very important to talk about in a relationship. Um, that that is a conversation you do need to have because it turns out that he wanted to be in an open relationship and I did not. And that was kind of the biggest downfall of our relationship um, was the fact that I was expecting him to be exclusive and he did not think that he was actually, not that he's polyamorous, because I think he's married now, but um, I guess they could have an ma open marriage. I don't know that, I guess. But um, I don't know if he's polyamorous necessarily. That's not a conversation we ever had. But I know that the girl he left me for, um, it, who he 
I think is the person that he married. Um, it, they were in an open relationship. Like it was said on Facebook, like they were in an open relationship for a while. And um, so I was just, I never understood that about him. So that was just something that either at the time he wanted to do, or maybe he is polyamorous and they are in an open marriage. I don't know. Um, I don't know anything about his life. We're not in contact. And so he was, um, like I said, he was just trying to, so we were, like I said, just all of a sudden, oops, in a relationship. And I was falling head over heels for this guy. And matter of fact, when I went to Vancouver the very first time in 2007, when I went to Anime Evolution, um, I was in love with him. Full on, I was in love with him. And he wanted to make a future with me. We weren't talking about marriage or anything like that. We were talking about moving in together. And um, I was saying, well, the reason, one of the big reasons why I never really wanted to date um, here, like in college or in Minnesota is because I don't want to stay in Minnesota. I want to move. And he's like, I want to move. I don't want to be in Minnesota. And I was like, I want to move to Vancouver, Canada. And he's like, I could move to Vancouver, Canada. And I was like, really? Like, you'd be willing to move to Vancouver, Canada. He's like, yeah, I'd be willing to move to Vancouver, Canada. And I was like, seriously. And he's like, what is so weird about that? And I'm like, because I was not expecting to find somebody who was willing to move with me somewhere. And like, that's how serious we were. We were talking about moving to Vancouver. We were talking, he had asked me when I was going out there to see if I could maybe scout some ideas for jobs for him so he could move out there first and then I could join him later. And that this was it. This was, this was the person I was going to spend the rest of my life with. And that was the intention. I remember the day that I realized I was in love with him was, um, my friend had died. So I had this friend, this was, um, that same summer, I ended that summer in Vancouver. Um, and three days before I moved to Vancouver, he cheated on me, which for him was not cheating because he thought we were in an open relationship. We never talked about exclusivity. To me, I felt like it was cheating because I expected exclusivity. So um, I've been told by male friends that I can't expect that, but I feel like I can because anybody who dates me should know that I want exclusivity. Um, and so three days before I left for Vancouver, I was cheated on and I remember, well, we'll get there. Anyway, the day I realized I was in love with him, um, my friend passed away and uh, she was not somebody that I knew very for very long. She was somebody that I knew through the internet. We were gonna meet for the first time. We went to Icon in 2007. I went with that girl that I lived with, my crazy roommate that I used to live with. <laughs> Check out that story time. And um, she ended up slipping into a coma that weekend and uh, she was already in the hospital at that point and um, she passed away. So, and I was devastated. And we were actually in a show together. We were in a play together at the time and we had a, we had, we were practicing, we were getting together t to rehearse. Um, and then after rehearsal, we were going to go out to dinner and I was sitting there with him and he's like, what's wrong? Like, what's up? Like, you seem sad. And I was like, I am sad. I just found out this morning that a friend of mine passed away. He spent that entire rehearsal either being right next to me. And if he couldn't be right next to me, he was trying to make me laugh. Like the director got so frustrated with him because he kept looking out at me um, as we were watching the rehearsal because we watched each other's each other rehearse so that we could give each other notes, that kind of thing. He would keep looking at me and making weird faces or wiggling his butt or grinding in, you know, grinding the air, whatever, and just would make me laugh. And that was the day that I realized I was in love with him because he was exactly the guy that I wanted. Somebody who was sweet and kind. And also when he needed to be very emotional, but also very strong. And somebody who was physically fit so we could work out together because we did, we worked out together, it was great. Um, 
and at the same time somebody who can make me laugh even when I'm at one of my lowest points because 2007 was such a weird year for me um, I got cheated on my grandpa died my friend died my parents got back together it was just a very very weird year um, and so I was in a really weird place by the end of it and the fact that he could make me laugh in that place in that time was so important to me he was such a wonderful person to me until I realized what kind of relationship we were in and I didn't want that so I left for Vancouver spent the weekend trying to figure it out I actually ended up very PG hooking up with a guy I didn't really hook up hook up with him we went on we went out to dinner and we kissed that's the extent of hooking up with this guy because I wanted to know if I wanted anybody else before I went back so that I could make the decision as to whether or not I wanted to be with him and I decided I wanted to be with him he's the only one the only man I've ever I have well to this day I mean like obviously I'm over it now but like at the time I couldn't imagine being with anybody else he was the one I wanted he's the one I wanted to be with for the rest of my life and um, so I went back and I wanted to make it work I wanted to work it out I wanted to figure it out and I wanted to be with him But he kind of made this a, the decision for me, kind of. He decided that he wanted another option, and I didn't want that. So I went to one of his football games and realized it was over because I found his parents, and they basically just told me that he didn't want to see me right now so I never heard from him again after that that was it that was the end of the relationship it was fast it was short but it was serious and it was the first time in my life that I realized what love was it's when I first realized what it meant to be in love even if it was just infatuation but it was the first time I felt that and it wouldn't be the last but it was the first and you know I will always thank him for allowing me to actually feel those feelings for somebody else because all through high school I never did and all of my other friends and people in high school were all dating and falling in love all around me and all the television shows were saying that teenagers fall in love all the time and I just I was getting to a point where I didn't think I was ever gonna be able to fall in love and then when I was 20 I did and I want to thank him for that because without him I would never have learned that I could love to that extent another person even if the road was hard and painful it kind of reminds me of that Garth Brooks song the dance where yeah it was uh, it was tough it was a tough existence but I wouldn't have missed it for the world because he gave me a lot in that um, in that relationship he gave me a lot of really great firsts and um, the times that we were together he was really good for me and really good to me it's just we had very different expectations about our relationship and that's basically the end of it so that's ladies and gentlemen that's one of the reasons why I drink ladies gentle gentlemen and then and them non-binary friends
one of the reasons why I drink. Like I said, it wouldn't be the last time I'd feel that. I'd feel it again. I haven't felt it in a while. I've been single for a very long time, but I think right now that's the best choice for me to be single because I feel like in order for you to truly be able to love somebody to their fullest and to your fullest, you have to love yourself to your fullest first. It's like the whole notion of putting on your air mask before you put on somebody else's on an airplane. You have to make sure that you're taken care of first. You love yourself. It's not that you're not worthy of love if you don't love yourself first. You're absolutely worthy of love regardless of your situation. In order for you to have a healthy relationship out here, you have to have a healthy relationship in here and I just don't have that right now. And I'm working on that. That's why I have a therapist, my friends. Um, so yeah, so there you go. That's one of the reasons why I drink. My first heartbreak, my first real heartbreak, the first time I was in love and my heart got broken. Wouldn't be the last. Certainly probably won't be the last to this day. And I'll cert certainly have more, I'm basically saying. Because I attract terrible people into my life. If you guys wanna see my last story time, go ahead and click right here. If you guys wanna see the story time where I thought my heart broke for the first time, you guys can click right here. Otherwise, you guys can click here to subscribe and click here to subscribe to my vlogging channel. Um, I make new videos every single Thursday on my main channel and whenever I feel like it on a Monday, it's actually usually a Saturday that I'm filming, but it goes up on a Monday on my vlogging channel, please hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss any of my videos on either one of the channels and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye! And let me know in the comments below your first heartbreak if you want to talk about it. Have a good one guys, bye!